Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, our quick little webinar today on construction manager as advisor delivery model, understanding roles and responsibilities. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, I hope that in this uh, short uh, webinar, you'll come away with an understanding of how the construction manager as advisor delivery model works and what some of the benefits are, uh, as well as the roles and responsibilities that get assigned to the construction manager. Uh, this slide is simply to uh, let everyone know that this is this presentation is protected by copyright uh, by the uh, AIA contract documents program, and you can't reuse it without our authorization. Uh, also, uh, that the views expressed are ours and mine uh, the, as the speaker and don't necessarily reflect the views of the American Institute of Architect. Uh, and this disclaimer slide is to reinforce the fact that um, the information we provide here is for general information purposes only. Uh, it's not intended to provide legal advice. And this slide is a picture of me. So I'm the speaker. My name is Ken Cobley. Uh, I'm the vice president and counsel for the AIA contract documents program. Uh, I've been with the program about 14 years now. Uh, a little over 14 years, and I oversee the group that uh, writes and publishes the AIA contract documents. Prior to that, um, I spent 14 or 15 years in private practice uh, in small to mid-sized firms in, in the Baltimore, Washington area, uh, focused mostly on construction litigation. So we're going to talk about the construction manager as as advisor delivery model. Uh, and I think that one of the best ways to understand that delivery model is to first it, take a look at the conventional or design bid build delivery model so we can talk about the key areas where you're going to see differences between the two delivery models and the roles of the participants. So. The design bid build delivery model is what everybody understands as the traditional uh, delivery model. And the slide that I have on the screen here is what we call a relationship diagram. It's intended to show the various contractual relationships between parties under this type of delivery model. You see that at the center of all, all of this is the owner. And under the traditional conventional design bid build delivery model, the owner engages an architect uh, to do design work. The architect is going to have actually a design team probably for most projects. Uh, so the architect is going to engage other design consultants. Oftentimes those are uh, engineers, uh, you know, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, structural, uh, those types of consultants. So we have a relationship between the owner and the architect and a relationship between the architect and its consultants. And that's the design side of the equation. Um, you also can see that sometimes an owner will engage other types of consultants directly. Uh, those consultants may inform some aspect of the project um, either as in, in a, the design or provide some influence to the design. For example, uh, the owner might engage a cost estimator. Um, oftentimes, uh, the burden to supply surveys is on the owner. Um, civil engineers are often owner direct consultants, separate and apart from the architect and its design consultants. And that all, uh, happens usually in the design phase um, before construction starts. And you'll hear us refer to that later as the pre-construction phase. But it's, it's a pretty linear process and everything happens on the design side leading up to 
the finalization of construction documents. And then the owner either goes out to bid or negotiates a price with a general contractor. And you can see uh, they have a direct relationship. Uh, the owner engages the general contractor and the general contractor engages subcontractors for the purpose of building the project. And so we have a design phase, the design is complete, and then we go to the construction phase. So that's the relationship in the conventional or design bid build uh, delivery model. And if you're wondering about what some of those uh, smaller numbers are, for those of you not familiar with AIA's documents, uh, the C-103 refers to uh, an owner consultant agreement. The B-101, 103, those are, are our conventional uh, owner architect agreements and so forth. Those numbers and letters all represent various types of agreements that we have to uh, solidify or create the contracts for those uh, relationships. Owner architect, owner contractor, contractor, subcontractor, would be the A401. That's what those numbers are going to mean. And you'll see them on the next slide as well. So this is a relationship diagram that shows the relationships that are going to occur when you have a construction manager as advisor delivery model. You can see that the owner may still have other owner direct consultants similar to what we discussed, perhaps a, a geotech, um, or surveyors or some other folk uh, in those disciplines. The owner is also going to engage an architect who's going to create a design team. And they are going to be primarily responsible for the development of the design and the creation of the documents necessary to construct the project. Now, if you look to the right, you'll see that the owner also engages the CM as advisor, CMA. But you can see the CMA is going to have responsibilities in both the pre-construction phase. Remember, we talked about that being the run-up to uh, bidding, you know, the, that when the design is being developed, as well as the construction phase. You'll also see here that the owner has a solid or direct line of contractual privity with either a general contractor or with multiple prime contractors. And that the CM has a dotted line, and we'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. So the CMA does not engage directly any of the contractors. The owner holds the contracts with those folk but the CM is going to oversee those contracts. And then of course, the contractor, if it's a general contractor, or if it's multiple primes, they will engage perhaps subcontractors to perform various portions of the work. So probably the key difference here is understanding that unlike in the design bid build scenario, in the CM as advisor scenario, the owner engages the CM as advisor to provide services during both pre-construction and construction phases. And the owner is going to hold the contracts with either a general contractor or, tra or multiple prime trade contractors. And that the CM is going to have some oversight responsibility uh, or contract administration responsibility on behalf of the owner uh, for each of those either multiple primes or for the general contractors uh, work. So in words now, uh, some of the key attributes. A CMS advisor provides construction management advice in pre-construction and construction phases. A CM as advisor usually has extensive industry experience. They've either been a general contractor, they may be, uh, have some civil engineering background, 
they've usually been involved um, at the ground level uh, on some construction projects before they take this on. So they, they have real life practical experience in this area. And because of that, and because of their direct relationship with the owner, they're in the position to make assessments that are independent of either the project designers or the project constructors. So they're an independent, neutral voice to the owner, um, and they can comment on uh, issues that might impact the design as well as issues that impact construction. During the pre-construction phase, the CM is going to pro usually provide cost estimating. So as the design is being developed, they're going to constantly be crunching numbers to tell the owner and the architect and the design team whether there, it looks like the design is going to work out to be within budget or whether there may be some budget issues. Um, they may also understand the supply line for the project and be able to comment on whether they may have, there may be labor issues that need to be taken into account or early lead items that might need to be um, purchased before uh, even the design is finished. They're going to do constructability review and provide input uh, to the design team on, on perhaps whether there's a better way to go about designing a particular aspect of it from construction standpoint, whether the site has any constructability issues, things that need to be taken into account on the site uh, for the contractors that might need to mobilize and so on and so forth. They're going to provide a whole range of what we what we often refer to as design assist services. That is, they're going to provide information and input that will assist the design team in making decisions and that the design team can rely on in formulating the final details of the design. Uh, but please understand that the actual responsibility for the adequacy of the design is going to rest, continue to rest with the design team. Um, and then, as I said before, they are going to coordinate contractors who, who are perhaps also have been engaged early to provide some elements of design services. Uh, perhaps the structural uh, work needs a little bit of contractor input. Um, and so they may have that even before uh, fi contracts are finalized and things move on to the construction phase. In the construction phase, the CMS advisor is gonna manage and coordinate uh, the contracts. Oftentimes this delivery model is used when you have uh, multiple prime contracts, multiple trade contractors. Uh, the CM as advisor is gonna have a daily presence on the project. So they're not just gonna stop in for occasional site visits. Um, as the architect or the engineers on the design team might do. But rather, uh, under normal circumstances, a CMA is going to have uh, a presence at a job trailer on the site so that they can handle in real time issues uh, that are arising uh, on the construction project. And they are going to jointly administer the contract, either if it's a general contract or the multiple trade contracts along with the architect, and we'll talk about that in a little more detail in a minute. So during the pre-construction phase, the owner retains the architect. The architect is going to retain other design professionals to help. And the architect and its consultants develop the design and prepare the drawings and specifications that are ultimately going to be used by either the general contractor or the trade contractors to build the project. The owner retains the CM as advisor, and that CM as advisor provides, as I said, probably cost estimating, other pre-construction services, scheduling, constructability review, and development of the multi-prime scopes of work if you're going to have 
multiple prime contractors on the project. During the construction phase, the owner is going to enter into contracts with either the general contractor or multiple prime contractors. The CM is going to coordinate the activities of multiple prime contractors if you have that scenario on your project. And then the CM is going to provide contract administration services in conjunction with the architect. So you can look at it this way. The CM as advisor provides the same coordination, management, and information flow between multiple prime contractors, those that have direct contracts with the owner. Um, it's the same type of services and same type of scenario that a general contractor normally would provide between subcontractors um, in, a, in the traditional delivery model. Um, the owner is going to retain the architect and the CMA uh, almost simultaneously. The CMA is going to act as an advisor to the owner during the pre-construction phase and is going to manage the construction of the contractors during the construction phase. Um, the contractors and subcontractors, however, are the parties that are actually responsible for the construction work. Um, and again, the CMA is going to give the owner construction management advice throughout the entire project, um, providing the expertise that the CMA has developed in planning and managing and coordinating all aspects of the project from start to finish. So why would you use such a delivery model? What are the benefits? Well, to the owner, use of a CM as advisor delivery model is going to allow the owner to have a direct contractual relationship with an entity, the CMA, that owes it a loyalty and has deep construction experience. Further advancing the goals of the owner and acting as an independent voice to the owner, um, bringing to bear all of the experience that the CMA has uh, in dealing with construction and working on construction projects. When we take into account the multi-prime elements of such a delivery model, this is going to allow the owner to begin to compress the construction schedule and bid out work in packages. So it is conceivable that the owner might be able to uh, actually bid out and start site work even before certain elements of the final design are completed. Uh, the same thing with foundations, structural steel, and so on and so forth. Um, so it allows for a phased uh, approach and early start. Again, for the contractors in this delivery model, they're going to be in direct privity with the owner. And in a multi-prime situation, no one contractor is going to have responsibility for overall coordination of work. That responsibility falls to the CM as advisor. So we talked a little bit, uh, I've mentioned a couple times now that the architect and the CM as advisor might share certain construction phase services and responsibilities. And uh, the next few slides, I'm going to try and highlight um, where some of those shared responsibilities might come in and how um, one party might have some element of responsibility. There might be some shared, and then another party might have it uh, as between the CM as advisor and the architect. So As you can see, the architect and the CM as advisor are both owner's representatives when it comes to elements of uh, contract administration. And each of the contracts will spell out what the exact authority of the architect and the construction manager are. Um, they're not agents 
but they do represent the interests of the owner uh, in varying degrees. So under the AIA's documents, and, and I think in the typical scheme of things, remember the construction manager is going to be on site all the time, and they're going to have direct oversight uh, of the contract relationship um, with the, either the multi-primes or the, or the general contractor. Um, and so it makes sense that the construction manager is going to receive and first review any submittals that are coming in from the contractors. The architect and the CM are going to have joint responsibility to then review and ultimately approve uh, the submittals. Uh, and, and that final approval authority goes to the architect, but it is run through the construction manager first so that they take a look and make sure that the contractors have submitted things that the, at least the construction manager thinks are in line with the submittal requirements on the project before it ever goes to the architect for final approval. Um, as you can see in the left column, the construction manager is going to maintain project documents on site. Uh, they may collect and deliver the final documents that are going to go to the owner. They may make a first pass recommendation when a contractor, if it's multi-prime or general, submits a request for information. It is, however, the architect and the design team that are going to interpret the contract documents and make a final uh, decision when it comes to the request for information like that. The construction manager is often tasked with preparing either change orders or construction change directives. Um, and both the architect and the CM are going to, at some point, have approval responsibility for change orders or construction change directives. You can see there's a whole host of uh, things that the architect and the CM share responsibility for, like notifying the owner if they discover defects, rejecting uh, work, uh, ordering testing, uh, and even demanding that certain work be uncovered if they have some question about its, its adequacy. Payment applications, at least under the way the AIA has uh, written responsibility is sort of interesting. Um, first pay applications go to the construction manager and the construction manager, particularly on a multi-prime job, is going to review all the pay applications from each of the multiple prime contractors and review them for uh, accuracy and completeness. And then the CM is going to prepare a project application for payment that's going to roll up all of the information from the various individual um, trade contractor applications and put that in a project application that then is going to go on to the architect uh, to uh, review and sign off on. And then again, here's just some more shared responsibilities. Um, you can see the CM is is the first person to work with the contractor or contractors to prepare the punch list. And then um, inspections with respect to substantial completion and final completion are jointly done with the architect and the CM as advisor. This is a list of the uh, documents that the AIA has in this delivery model. We call them families, but we often refer to delivery models uh, when we have coordinated sets of agreements. Um, we often refer to them as a family within a delivery model. So we have a traditional uh, family of documents, conventional A201 family of documents. We have CM as advisor family of documents. We have CM as constructor. We have design build family. Um, and that just means we've developed a coordinated set of agreements as well as some oftentimes forms that are specific to this delivery model 
that have unique characteristics related to them. So this is a listing of all of the documents in the AIA CM as advisor family. You see the various agreements and supplementary conditions on the left-hand side, and you see various forms um, that relate to this uh, listed on the right-hand side. And again, oftentimes the CM uh, has to prepare and sign off on certain forms. And, and you can see the G736 and 737 are the project application for payment and the summary of the contractor's applications for payment. And that's an example of where the construction manager has to um, first prepare and sign off on forms used for contract administration. So uh, that pretty much wraps up the very uh, top line overview of the CM as advisor delivery model. I just wanna make you aware of some resources and then we'll try to get to a few questions if there are any. Um, there's a link, you're gonna get these slides <clears throat> and some other information. If you follow that link, you can get to uh, documents for each of the, the forms and agreements I showed you. You can, you can see a synopsis, um, you can find out what related documents there are. If it's the second or third generation, like the CMA R, you can see the differences between our 2019 versions and our 2009 versions of the documents. Um, if you're interested in, in a webinar on CMS Constructor, we have one at March 15th, very similar to this one. Uh, if you want a really deep dive in construction management, uh, we have a four and a half hour webinar uh, available through our website as well. Um, <clears throat> just to let you know, the American Bar Association Forum on Construction Law follows a, a lot of the AIA documents closely. They just published um, this book, which is a, an analysis of our 2019 uh, construction management revisions. I think the book principally focuses on construction manager as constructor documents, but I throw it out there for those who are interested in both those delivery models. And again, you'll get these, um, but there are a number of resources on our webpage, as well as customer service lines uh, and emails that you can use if you have more questions about our CMA documents or any of the other documents that are published by the AIA. And so with that, um, I will open it up to see if, Hasti, do we have any questions coming in? Does the CMA work with any BIM models? The CMA can, um, as part of its overall responsibilities for um, administering the construction contracts, yes. You, the AIA documents do not get into that level of detail in terms of specific responsibilities um, with respect to working with the models. Um, that has to be worked out on a project by project basis, but certainly as part of their oversight for the multiple trade contractors and part of the coordination, if they have the requisite expertise in building information modeling, then they can um, coordinate uh, that activity, um, they can be the keeper of the models. Uh, and, and as a default, um, with respect to digital data generally, the AIA document assigns that to the construction manager as advisor uh, to sort of be the lead on coordinating, keeping digital data and the models. As well as any post-construction turnover. So if if the model is supposed to be a deliverable by the contractor or contractors, then that would fall within the bailiwick of the CM as advisor. But you have to work that out with them and make sure they have the requisite background to do that. So with that, we will end today's webinar. If you have any follow-up questions, please direct them to docinfo at AIA.org. Ken, thank you very much, and thank you to all of our attendees for taking the time to participate in today's webinar.